Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? If the peanut gallery is just going to sit back there and laugh, then I'm going to draw you into this thing whether you want to or not. (laughs) She can probably barely hear you with the earbuds in. (laughs) I hope she respect the pause. Uh, Well, we have uh, Callie's oldest daughter in, in the room. My You're oldest. Right. <laughs> Gary, Gary's oldest daughter. <laughs> Cal, sorry. Yes. <laughs> you want to just start this whole thing all over again? Right. We're not going to do that. No. You know what I mean. But. I'm looking right at you when I said that, so the name, <laughs> of course, bubbled to the surface. And I, I'm, I've got like a really bad headache. Yeah. Uh, I might be having a stroke. <laughs> well, it, well. It, There's a possibility there. Uh, if, every, so, if so, the whiskey will help that, right? Well, I'm hoping <laughs> because, you know, the whiskey is a vasodilator. Is it? Yes, so it should relieve any pressure. Oh, well, there you go. So, think you're having the stroke? Take a shot of whiskey. Of course, if it's like actual, like, um, a bleed, yeah. then it'll make it it'll worse. It'll make it worse. <laughs> I, I'll, yeah, that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll it, power that's, through. That's really kind of what a stroke is. But, yeah. It, you know, if I fall down, at least you know what might be the problem. <laughs> I know what to tell the paramedics when I call, right? <laughs> and all the listeners will be able to witness somebody having a stroke. <laughs> well, listen to someone having a stroke. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> it looks and sounds more or less the same. Well, you have to survive because I won't know how to send this off without you. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got to learn the, some tech stuff. Even though I watch you do it every week, I still I could, I'd be lost, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing that I did this week was migrate our hosting. Oh, did you? So we're on new hosting. So we're on blue. Yep. So I, I moved our website from the one to the other. Yeah. So that was a success. Uh, well, it seems to be. I, you can still get to the website. All well, the links I'm, seem to work. Well, good. <laughs> there was some. Uh, I don't know if I would say trial and error exactly, but I certainly didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and there were some points where I was just like, uh, what next? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% confident until we post the podcast tonight. That, that everything's correct. And we can see it. <laughs> wow. Then we definitely need you here tonight because I'd really be lost without you now. <laughs> yeah, but nobody will know because yeah. it won't ever get up there. <laughs> right. <laughs> until I get out of the hospital or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So wow. then. Um. Our good friend Greta Thunberg has made her way back to Spain, I think. Yeah. Uh, So did I read something that she's like protesting going to school? Like she's not going to go to school till like the climate crisis has been dealt with? Well, I think that's been kind of one of the things to begin with. It's been school strikes. Okay. They've been school strikes from the the beginning. Okay. And apparently I wasn't aware of this because when that... So I was like, wow, so like... She's seriously not going to go to school till we fix the weather for her? Like, I mean, <laughs> like what, what's the deal here? Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, um, you know, you don't want to interrupt that uh, climate change ignorance with any kind of educating. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, she, she might learn that she's wrong. Actually, yeah. I still think she seems like a smart girl. Yeah. And I still think that someday down the road, she's going to read more. And not just like the mainstream stuff, yeah. the the stuff that's being suppressed. Fed to her, yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, read, read other stuff. Yeah, yeah. she'll read more the stuff that's being, being more suppressed. Yeah. Um, and she's going to recognize that she has spent years of her young life yeah. <laughs> on, the on wrong. a crusade for the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. But that's just where I stand. Um, she went to, I'm pretty sure it's Spain. I should check. It's either Spain or Portugal, but I'm pretty sure it's Spain uh, because they're doing, um, they're having a climate change conference there right now. And of course, oh, they, they uh, just released, well, I say just released, a couple of weeks ago, I guess they released um, information on the average temperature for 2019. And uh, once again, it is one of the top three hottest years on record. Yeah. Of course, um, that's before averaging in the temperatures for November and December. Yeah, but surely those are going to be hot months too, right? Like, well, <laughs> that shouldn't have any effect on those numbers, right? Uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't think so. They do this every year, by the way. Yeah, um, this is just the way it's done. We just don't average in the two coldest months of the year. Yeah, well, they're not the coldest months of the year. I mean, oh. probably, like you probably get the coldest months of the year at the beginning of the year. 
But yeah. these are cold months. And you might say, well, I mean, you have Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere, and the Southern Hemisphere is in the opposite season, right? So maybe that's it. But there's a lot more uh, climate recording stations in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. So Or temperature recording stations in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, anyway, it's... It, Three kinds of lies, right? Lies, yeah. damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> there you so, go. <laughs> um, that's, you know, that's the thing. And I, I don't know. I, I, I've made the argument over and over again. Yeah, climate change is happening. There's yeah. no question about that. Um, I actually think that there is some question about whether the world is getting warmer or not. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a ton of question about how much human activity is contributing to it's this affecting that yeah and this idea that the whole world's going to die if we if the world gets two degrees warmer um well the world's been significantly warmer than that in the past and i'm not talking about the very beginning when it was all lava and stuff i mean yeah. you know the age of the dinosaurs was significantly warmer and yeah. it's one of the most biodiverse and and uh, biomass intense periods in the history of the earth yeah so well, it seems to me an argument could be made that a warmer climate would be more conducive to, like, agriculture and whatnot. I mean, I'm I'm no climate scientist, but well, it just seems to me that a warmer climate would be better for that type of thing. There's winners and losers. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there is. And and what's so bad is we're, we're so populated on the planet. Now, I'm not saying we're overpopulated. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people on this pl- in this place. And areas are going to experience changes through this so places that you know used to not flood are going to flood mm-hmm. and and things like that so i mean it's it's overall it's it's bad for people in general but i'm just saying like it seems like there will be win- like you say winners and losers in this mm-hmm. so. yeah um there always will be uh northern climates will be more con- uh you know more conducive to agriculture um more equatorial climates some of them won't change that much. Some of them will become drier. But, yeah. you know, the other thing is that the animals and plants both migrate. Yeah. Well, they, and so do they humans. They settle where they do the best. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, um, and certainly uh, a more carbon dioxide rich atmosphere is better for plant growth. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but, you know, they've stopped talking about carbon dioxide and started talking about, you know, uh, carbon pollution yeah. um, instead. But they're talking about carbon dioxide. Yeah. Uh, and I, every time it comes up, I'm like, well, you, you know, that's that's what plants breathe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe it's not so bad that yeah. we have it. And the truth is, if you go back far enough, uh, like the life poisoned this planet to begin with. Yeah. Um, when they, uh, you know, the first life arose, the algaes and so forth, and they were bringing in carbon dioxide and uh, and excreting oxygen. Yeah. Um, oxygen wasn't something that existed in any significant quantity on this planet. Yeah. Uh, and oxygen is a poison to an awful lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it was, you know, it was life that brought oxygen here in the first place by completely polluting the planet with it. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, yeah. they brought in a substance that was not here in any significant co- quantities and they pushed it up, you know, it points to 30 some percent of the atmosphere. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a good thing that they did because that's what we breathe. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. anyway, the, the whole thing is a, is a debate that's, uh, that they're trying to prevent there from being any debate. There is yeah. Very, very little in science that everybody agrees on. And the um, prevalence of the 97% statistic drives me crazy. Um, that's, yeah. you know, it, it's been made into something that it isn't really. Um, they were looking at, um, at periodicals and looking specifically for um, climate change articles and saying how many of them uh, agree that there's climate change. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's not that's the part that's not really debatable. Yeah, um, it's like uh, without getting into the evolution debate, it's like asking if species change over time. Yeah, um, and and, and asking if scientists, you know, if we take a whole bunch of articles about um, evolution and we just look and see uh, how many of them agree that species change over time. 
It's probably going to be all of them, it's right? It's going to be a pretty high percentage. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, so it, it's the same kind of question here. And the idea that that people could have enough of an understanding of an, such a complex system um, yeah. to predict what the temperature is going to be in 100 years when they can't predict what the temperature is going to be the day after tomorrow yeah, uh, it seems it's, like truly absurd. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this. The, the propaganda is in full swing. I mean, I was just watching the news tonight. Like they, It's almost like they, they can't mention anything weather-related without throwing it out there mm-hmm. um, to the point where – like if if you're looking for it, like if you're waiting to hear when they're going to drop it, it's annoying. Like because yeah. they do it once you once you know this that that's what they're doing. It's it's you notice it. It's crazy and it's quite quite annoying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you know, just some other things to consider in this um, is that they they kept changing their terminology. Now it started yeah. off as global cooling, you know, because there was yeah. this cooling trend, and we're in an interglacial right now, and we actually might be closer to the end of it. Like we might be closer yeah. to a new glacial period than an actual warming period, but yeah, just based on timing, yeah, um, and cycles, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> um, what was I? Where was I going with that? The uh, terminology. Yeah. Okay. So they went from global cooling to global warming. Yeah. Um, but then you know the data didn't always fit with that. So then it became global climate change. Yeah. Well, global climate change is a great choice because no matter what happens, you can say it's global <laughs> can, climate yeah, change. Exactly. Uh, there were no hurricanes this year. Well, it's well, because it's of the climate, climate change. change. There yeah. were so many hurricanes well, this year. Well, it's because of the climate change. <laughs> y- y- you know. Well, and what does climate do other than change? Oh no, like, it, there's, there's, there's there, no there's no cl- climate <laughs> consistent. Like, I mean, you, you wouldn't say yeah. that. Like, man, this climate's really not consistent. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> yeah, the truth is that a static climate would be far more alarming. Right? <laughs> um, because it would be so outside the norm. Uh, and uh, and so, and then as far as the, uh, the measuring devices, uh, there's a lot of problems with that, too. Um, yeah. A friend of mine at the office has been showing me data from uh, a bunch of these things. He's been pulling data because he's gotten really interested in this stuff. Yeah. And he's a, he's a data guy. Like, Likes numbers. Yeah. So he's been pulling temperature data um, from all these various stations that uh, NOAA and NASA use for their their climate data. Yeah. Um, and it includes, you know, dew points and rainfall and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But just looking at the temperature stuff, um, you'll see a couple of stations that are literally two miles apart. Yeah. Showing wildly different numbers. Really? Yeah, wildly different numbers. Um, and there's, uh, you know, plenty of reasons that you could say for that. Okay, so one of them's out in the field. Yeah. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, it gets generally higher wind um, and maybe even generally higher precipitation than the one that's in the woods. Yeah, um, And they have that. higher temperatures there, too, because... Uh, the one out in the field is in the sun all day long, where the one in the woods is in the shade. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's all these kinds of things that, like, Factors. they talk about ambient air temperature, but ambient air temperature is different from, uh, you know, um, cubic meter to cubic meter. And yeah. that's why that's why uh, weather in general is so hard to predict. Yeah. Um, if you you know if you go into the the chaos theory thing, we all saw Jurassic Park, right? Like the <laughs> butterfly flapping its wings in um, you know wherever Singapore can bring yeah. rain instead of sunshine in Dallas or whatever. I don't remember exactly yeah. what the thing is, but <laughs> yeah. but that's exactly the problem is that you have so many different data points in this. Well, and so many variables. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. there's so many different variables that feed into weather in general and climate in the in the long run yeah. and all of these things change actually depending on your scale that you're looking at it in anyway yeah. um but uh just the you know the differences between the temperature you know right here at this table and the temperature out in the hallway yeah. um can have an impact on the the future results once you've iterated enough times yeah you know yeah. you, you keep recalculating based on this information and and you know the world is a, is a chaotic chaotic place exactly so um so there's that <laughs> I, I guess i that turned into a little bit more of a discussion than i i actually expected it to be i just yeah. I, I had planned on that just being a mention and yeah. moving on um mm-hmm. but you know we're just going to keep fighting this stuff and i'm not yeah. saying that you know i'm not saying that we don't contribute to it i just think that the I think it's really arrogant to think that we are the cause yeah. of climate change, climate change that has occurred f- 
for the entire history of the earth. Exactly. Um, and it's even a greater arrogance to think that we can control where it's going to go in the future. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's not to say I want to see us just destroying the planet because, and that's where my thing's always mm-hmm. been. Like, there's a difference for me for between like like conservation and like wanting to like do the right thing as far as conservation is concerned and like just like shutting down corporation and mm. stuff you know i mean it's just there's a, it's different you know i'm yeah. all for conservation well and you know the the data suggests that private property actually conserves the environment far better than public control yeah. um you know the the state uh state with a big S, yeah. setting aside all this long land for conservation, these huge tracts of land for conservation and so forth, they actually don't do a very good job of conserving it. Yeah, um, You run into the tragedy of the commons, the, the idea that um, something that belongs to everybody actually belongs to nobody. nobody yeah. and so nobody takes care for it because it's not really theirs. Exactly. Um, whereas you have a much better track record with private property because people want to uh, have an investment. Like if you invest enough capital into something you want it to give you returns for as long as possible yeah and uh and the truth is and people don't know this i i think for the most part is that your big uh you know public forests the national forests and stuff like that yeah. um they sell off tracts of land for logging and all kinds of stuff they they oh, yeah. you know that's happening all the time this is part of where their budget comes from is just <laughs> by selling those resources to companies that want to come in and, take and them. cut yeah. it all down yeah whereas if the company owned that or if they were trying to take it off of a private seller yeah. the private seller almost certainly would want to maintain it better than the state does yeah because the, the private seller has to make money off of it for as long as he can, whereas the state doesn't have to make money off of it all because they can just take it from you if I they was need more say, money. Yeah, exactly. They, they don't care where the money comes from. Yeah. <laughs> so. Food for thought. Yeah, just something to mull over. Um, then uh, we have the NATO meeting. Ah, yes. This has been entertaining. <laughs> Uh, So, you know, leading into it, of course, uh, Trump was campaigning against NATO when he was campaigning. Oh, absolutely. Um, Although he seems to have changed his position a bit. Of course, pretty much everything that Trump said, he's also said the opposite and something in the middle. Well, and I was going to say, as as far as like Trump campaigning, I do remember him talking about making NATO, making everybody pay their fair share in NATO. Um, And I think that's something... That, like I say, in the campaign, he said a lot of things. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to refine it down. But I do think that that's something that he stood behind because he's he's definitely, as a president, pressed a lot of these nations to put more in. And he's been successful. Yeah. Um, NATO collected like an, an extra $130 billion or something in the last year. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the countries are coming closer than to what they were supposed to be giving all along. Yeah. And actually, um, over the next several years... Uh, the U.S. is going to be giving less, apparently. This is yeah. one of the things that they discussed at this meeting. Yeah. The U.S. will be giving less, and some of these other countries will be giving more. Yeah, which is which? That's a that was a campaign deal. Like I remember mm-hmm. that. That's the specific thing I remember. He talked a lot about NATO, but that yeah. was the one that always stuck with me. Well, Mark won in the win column for uh, for Donald Trump, I suppose. Yeah, that makes. Not that I'm not early for NATO, so it's not no. something that I like. I mean, I'm kind of against the whole deal, but well, but that's but you know that's something he can tout though. Okay, and this the that's something we're talking about, but uh, we'll come back to it. Um, so, and then leading in, uh, Macron's famous thing about that NATO is brain dead. Yeah. Um, of course. He wasn't actually advocating dismantling NATO. He was talking about refocusing NATO on other things. That, yeah. um, that what it was doing isn't what it should be doing and that we need to do something else with it. It wasn't really about that the, that it's a waste of time. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly what happened because this is essentially is tabloid stuff as far as I'm concerned, so I didn't read about it. Yeah. Um, but apparently Justin Trudeau said something disparaging about Trump to some other world leaders, and Trump got all upset about it. Yeah. And I, when I heard that, all I thought is, like, just, Justin Trudeau shouldn't be saying anything disparaging about anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> that guy is, I'm not sure if there's much between his ears. Yeah. I am have not been impressed with him. And 
all I thought was some of those man on the street, and of course you can manipulate the results of these man on the street interviews or whatever. Oh yeah. But I, I remember them doing man on the street interviews uh, with people after Justin Trudeau was elected and asking people why they voted for Justin Trudeau, and I swear the most common answer was his hair. His hair, yeah, I, I can totally see it too. Oh, that's a good reason to vote for someone, right? Yeah. Oh. That's too funny. So, um, and that was mostly women, by the way. So, I am not yeah. in favor of universal suffrage going forward. <laughs> well, she didn't hear that. <laughs> no, she, didn't. No, she ain't paying she us no anyway. attention. To, she ain't paying <laughs> oh, us nothing. <laughs> but, um, and in terms of NATO on the whole, uh, yeah, uh, it, it should have been dismantled in 1991. Yeah. Because the whole, I mean, while they didn't say it, and this is why it has managed to continue, I think, while they didn't say it in the original charter that the purpose was to contain or to to deter uh, any kind of um, aggression from the Soviet Union, yeah, it was very clear that that's what it was about. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and the Soviet Union uh, no longer exists. Yeah, <laughs> it, it dissolved almost thirty years ago. Yeah. Um, and yet we still have NATO and they, cause they keep trying to refocus on something else. And they actually said in this one that they, you know, that they wanted to, um, focus on Russia and now China too. Yeah. And I, all right, just as another <laughs> comment on that. Um, so NATO, the North Atlantic treaty organization yeah. wanting to focus on China that has no Atlantic port. At all, <laughs> <laughs> no Atlantic port um, is is just bizarre in the most terrible way. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's just because they're they're searching for an enemy, yeah. and that's really yeah. what it's about. And uh, you know, beyond all the the okay, it was created to deal with the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union's gone. That's it. Should have just been dismantled then. Yeah. Um, you have the Article Five problem, and the Article Article Five of the UN or the NATO Charter is that um, any attack against a member nation will be treated as, by the others as an attack against them. Yeah, like it, it is a requirement essentially that um, you band together and all declare war on anybody that attacks any one of the nations. And this is you know this is a pretty common deterrence yeah. thing, but. Now that it's been expanded so much, this is a real problem. Yeah. Well, what if one NATO partner attacks another? How does that well, work? <laughs> yeah, and there were some questions about that too when I we remember. were having all this stuff in uh, in Syria with, with related with to Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so who knows? Uh, yeah. But you know, beyond kind of just that, becomes a free for all. Then I guess when the Soviet Union dissolved, um, Bush the Elder. Not the younger Bush, the elder, <laughs> the elder yes, um, had a uh, had an agreement with the uh, the Soviet now Russian president that NATO wouldn't expand to the east, not one yeah. inch to the east. Yeah, right. The lines were already drawn. We aren't going to get any closer to your borders. Don't worry about NATO. Yeah. Well, NATO was formed with twelve states um, as a part of it. It's now twenty nine, yeah. and. In that time, it has absorbed uh, some Warsaw Pact nations, uh, Poland, Romania, Albania, to name a couple of them. Hmm. Um, And since the the dissolution of the Soviet Union, it has absorbed some former Soviet republics, too. Really? Which is obviously moving closer to Russia's borders. So um, they have, uh, like, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, all these countries are now members of NATO, too. Huh. I didn't know that. So the NATO countries are right on Russia's border. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. And of course, there was the promise that they would they wouldn't, wouldn't do, do that. that. Yeah. yeah. But there they are. Yeah. And uh, so the other problem that you run into, and of course, these are countries that can't really defend themselves. You yeah. know, and they're trying to put uh, northern. Macedonia as part of the like this is a country that has no defense at all. Anyway, yeah. Um, so what happens if Russia feels the heat a little bit too much? And of course, the way it's presented to us generally in the U.S. is that the um, the Russians are showing aggression towards NATO troops 
um, by moving forces near their NATO troops, but the Russians are moving forces within their own borders. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, to their own borders, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, where the NATO troops are right on the other side. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, it is, it, it's like saying um, if the Mexican army were to uh, congregate, um, you know, near, I don't know, uh, Guadalajara or something, I don't know, it's yeah. somewhere close to the U.S. Border. border. Yeah. Um, and the U.S. troops started moving troops down there, yeah. um, and they said, oh... That's the, an act of aggression. Yeah, the Americans are showing <laughs> aggression towards the Mexican troops that are amassing on their border. Right. I mean, <laughs> exactly. um, well, hey, they got to put troops down there. Us Americans fix and start jumping the fence, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> got to worry about the... Uh, well, you know, they've been making that claim, right? Like that there's more people moving from the U.S. into Mexico into than Mexico. Mexico into the U.S. Hey, maybe they got a point, man. Yeah, I... I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, there's more Americans moving into Mexico for a week or two for a vacation in Cabo or yeah. whatever. The, this, <laughs> this, like, peaks over spring break, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but the, the the real concern with all this now, especially with focuses on Russia and now China as well, yeah. is that, okay, so what if um, Russia gets fed up with this and does move – I mean – what if Ukraine was a, uh, a NATO member? And they're trying yeah. to be. Oh, yeah. And they may end up being. Yeah. Okay, so what if this war continues in Ukraine? And by the way, the war in Ukraine is not Russian aggression. Yeah. Um, Ukraine, uh, at least the eastern, the Donbass region, uh, had a referendum to join the Russian Federation. or the, And they... And it succeeded yeah, in, in the Donbass region. Yeah. Um, and Putin said... No, thanks. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's not like they're trying to absorb the Ukraine. Yeah. Um, they are providing some support to the to the separatists in the Donbass region. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but these are people that are trying to defend, from their perspective, are people that are, are Ukrainians, yeah. that consider themselves Russians, that are trying to defend themselves against the western part of their own country. Right. <laughs> um, so... We can get into more of that some other time. That's a that's a whole story whole that we're basket, not getting yeah. <laughs> very much of. I, I got a, a one of these um, newsletters from um, our representative uh, Bradley Byrne down here the other day talking about the uh, the whole Ukraine scandal and so forth. And yeah. there was a bunch of historical information about the Ukraine. I was like, well, that's just a lie. Really? <laughs> like, or at least it's a half truth. Like, you're certainly yeah. not giving all the information, all the story. And yeah. uh, and I thought, well, but the problem is, like, how many people read as much about this as I do? Yeah, right. Like all all these uh, Bradley Byrne supporters that are getting this this newsletter, the they great know. majority of they them, they're the like, difference. oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those those damn Russians, yep. you know, trying to take over that country. It's not really what's going on. Yeah. Um, and there was, by the way, no mention of the coup. <laughs> in 2014 that yeah. uh was you know organized by the united states yeah <laughs> and it's it's an it's an open secret yeah like, there's yeah. no question about it all right i got a little off track there um anyway the the big concern is that if russia gets fed up with this and they do actually in, invade one of these or the ukraine is brought into nato and they decide that this is an aggression against ukraine and that um it triggers article five and so all these countries need to declare war on russia yeah the idea that we could fight a long-term conventional war against russia ain't happening yeah absolutely it ain't not. happening yeah. um so whenever you're you know they always ask this question right like uh would you support um the u.s helping defend Romania or wherever uh, yeah. against Russian aggression, and people say yes. <clears throat> and I, I wonder um, how much that would change if you said, uh, "Bear in mind that this could trigger trigger a nuclear war." Yeah, yeah. And, and does I, that change your opinion? It's true. how important do you yeah. think Romania is? <laughs> right? that, is it worth you know hundreds of millions of lives? Yeah, because I mean you. You've got to remember, man, if we fight the war with Russia, we're going to do... It's going to be on our borders. Yeah. It's not like they're going to just... It's not going to be like these other wars we fought where they don't attack us. You know? Well, I mean, it, it would be right up until the nuclear option came in. Well, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, but that's but that's my point though. Yeah. Is once the nukes start dropping, they're mm-hmm. not just going to be dropping in Russia. <laughs> they're going to be dropping here too. Yeah, they're going to start hitting our cities, mm-hmm. and like, and that's that's something this country's never, other than you know the attack in um of Hawaii, that's not something we've really dealt a whole lot with. You know, I mean, we nine eleven maybe if you depending on how you want to look at that. Well, the Japanese did manage to get some rockets into California too. Did they? Yeah, but they were just like just random, over there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. like just kind of hit wherever. They, yeah. um, it's like the you know, uh, I, I did know that because I read something years ago now, but um, that they still find those periodically, like out in the yeah. woods. Like they'll just find the unexploded ordnance that's mm. that's from Japan, yeah, in California. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, so you know, this is the real concern about the NATO alliance at this point. Yeah. Um, there was a time when it was a reasonable deterrent, and now it's just a provocation. Yeah. Um, and we don't want a provocation with Russia. And we no. don't want a provocation with China, even though we have way more nuclear weapons than China. Yeah. I mean, like, it order of magnitude. Many. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it order of magnitude doesn't. more than China, but it only takes a few. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... Um, so that's the real concern about NATO, and I, I think we ought to get out of it. Of course, I like... I don't like these big supranational organizations anyway. Yeah. Um, I think that we should kick the UN right off our shores and, and leave that one too. I um, agree, but... But, uh, you know, the it, I think it's... In, it's nice to see, <laughs> in some ways, it's yeah. nice to see some of these, um, you know, some of the antagonism uh, among the member states of NATO. Yeah. Uh, and particularly because it's much of the core states, actually, you know, the antagonism yeah. between France and Germany and between France and the U.S. and between Germany and the U.S. And, you hmm. know, England's kind of going along to get along, I guess. But, yeah. um, you know, there's some antagonism between them and all of Europe right now because of the Brexit thing. Right. And <laughs> anyway, I think this is good to see. I hope that this leads to a dissolution of NATO, but I don't think it will. No, I wouldn't hold my breath for that one. Yeah. Um, I don't, well, uh, we were talking about Mexico a minute ago, <laughs> may as yeah. well go there. Um, I'm, I was actually trying, trying to keep this kind of short, but I have, I do go on. <laughs> <laughs> have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Your, your page of notes is about half the size it normally is. Yeah. Uh, maybe less. Yeah. Maybe less. You're right. Yeah. Um, well, I just I figured a lot of this stuff is things that I could just get talk about yeah. anyway um i didn't i didn't feel per, uh, any particular need to write down a whole bunch of facts on a lot of this stuff because like i, kn- I know them yeah. it's not things that i had to remember i didn't need quotes and i <laughs> didn't need you know specific specific statistics that i didn't already more or less have in my head and yeah anyway and um I don't know. We were only planning on talking about two things, and then I expanded to several more. And, but <laughs> it's it, funny it, how the conversation rolls. Yeah, um, and it expanded to several more because things kept happening. Yeah, uh, such as the shootout on the Mexican border. So ah. there's this, you know, big shootout between, um, I guess, it's Mexican police and drug cartels uh, along the Mexican border, and um, there was. Uh, immediate reaction from Donald Trump about um, declaring the drug cartels uh, terrorists. Yeah. A, a terrorist organization. Yeah. Um, and there's some, like, real specific reasons for that. But uh, before we get to that, um, like, we're the cause of this. The yeah. U.S. is the cause of this. Right. Uh, the prohibition on drugs is what created this organized crime because it is incredibly lucrative. Well, and I listened to, of course, a Ron Paul thing, and he did like a short little thing on just this. Mm-hmm. And basically, that's the, that was the argument he made. He was like, if you truly want to end this war or fix this war on drugs and do away with this, like instead of expanding it into like the war on terror, which is what basically Trump wants to do, mm-hmm. is which is a war we're losing, by the way. Um, same with the war on drugs. He's like, there's an easy solution here. Like in the war on drugs, yeah, just stop. <laughs> yeah, stop, stop the prohibition of these drugs. Mm-hmm. Let the market handle it, and there you go. Like the cartels will be done within a week. Yeah. Or they'll turn into legitimate businessmen, and then fine. Well, yeah. If if <laughs> if so, so be it. But yeah. it would. Like I say, there, there's a really easy solution here, and nobody wants to hear it. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the Simpsons thing? 
Um, the mafia, the you know, Fat Tony and all them hang out at the legitimate businessman's club or something like <laughs> that. Right. I don't remember. <laughs> something like that, though. Yeah. Um, well, and, and this has an impact on a bunch of things. This is a um, this is another one of those um, answer a problem created by government by adding more government yep. uh, issues. And we can talk about because we've already gone longer than I expected. Um, we can come back to the immigration thing another time. I mean, this is yeah. related to this. This is oh, it a, absolutely. You know, is. our uh, trying to restrict immigration, which I, I know that you're in support of, and I'm not. Yeah. And it's one of those things that it's like it's throwing out baby with the bathwater. Yeah. Like you have a problem that's created by a whole bunch of government policies, and yeah. your answer to it is to just like use government to restrict it more because <laughs> there's a problem yeah. that was created by a gov- bunch of government policies instead of like just trying to start all over let's yeah. let's get rid of the welfare state um let's get rid of the drug war let's you know i'm we, in favor of all of those things yeah, by the way well Just, if you <laughs> if you take care of all of those things then immigration isn't a problem anymore i completely it's agree. just something that happens yeah. it's just a it's just part of general market exchange then people come and looking for work yeah. finding work or not and yeah. then going back home yeah. um but like I said, we can you know <laughs> another discussion for another day. <laughs> yeah, we we've talked about this a In bit, late, and it yeah. <laughs> needs more time. Yeah. Um, but the you know this is the the issue with the drug war is that it creates these kind of criminal organizations. Yeah. Because it makes it an incredibly lucrative job, and you know the terrorism thing makes it even funnier because if you there's a few things that you can do if you declare something a terrorist organization. Yeah. And this is a purely political thing. They're not a terrorist organization. It's organized crime. It's not the same thing. Um, But it allows you to do some stuff if you call it a terrorist organization. Yeah. And one of those things is that you can put sanctions on all these members. Okay. But they don't care. Yeah, right. I I mean, like, if it wasn't such a rich business anyway, that might matter. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there's so yeah. much money in moving drugs across the border into the U.S. because the yeah. demand is here. Oh, yeah. You know, whether you allow it or not, the demand is here. Yep. Um, and so people – and because it's restricted, uh, you have to pay a premium. Yeah. yeah. It just makes it that much more lucrative. Well, and so sanctions aren't going to – you know, are, are no are, deterrence whatsoever. Yeah, it's not, not fixing the problem. No. Um, but another big thing that it does is – and I – you know, I don't like the using the terrorist language yeah. to um, classify organizations that we don't like yeah. um, so that you have more options, more generally not within the law, like the normal <laughs> law options yeah. to deal with them, like we did Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. Like, yeah. this is a state organization. This is a state military. Yeah. Like, it's not a terrorist organization. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, and frankly, I don't really see like the whole you know a big part of the purpose of that is just so that they you can fight them under the 2001 2002 uh authorization for use of military force yeah. which are way past their their oh, yeah. expiration date as far as i'm concerned yeah um but they're still using this and so essentially you can chase legally and i would put that in quotes too yeah. legally um because we're still functioning under these AUMFs um, from after 9-11, um, legally you can chase an organization that's part of the War on Terror, which they become part of the War on Terror by being declared a terrorist by organization. By saying that, yeah. Um, all over the world. Yeah. And there's no limitations. You talk about uh, no nations, no borders. Well, we don't recognize nations or borders when we're chasing terrorists. Yeah. And this could create a real problem with our southern neighbor Mexico, uh, <laughs> right. they immediately reacted by saying, like, not in our country. You're not sending troops over here. What do yeah. you, th- you, you must be crazy. Yeah. Um, but do we care? Yeah. I mean, it's I not mean, like if, the. If we the, decide to do it, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, it's not like yeah. Mexico is a real threat to us either. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and the, the other thing, and this is the, this is the really scary part. This is the part where, um, you start talking about people's rights. And if we believe that our Bill of Rights, our, you know, our Constitution um, and our values are based on a concept of natural rights. Yeah. All people have these rights. Yeah. Whether they're citizens or not. Now, I I have made the argument before that um, it's our government's responsibility to protect 
and defend yeah. the rights of its own citizens, not necessarily to protect and defend the rights of other people's citizens, yeah. which is why I'm opposed to like going in and trying to save the Uyghurs in China uh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, those kinds of, of operations. Can't be chasing monsters. Yeah. That being said, um, it is certainly uh, contrary to that concept to allow our government to ignore other people's rights because they're not citizens. Yeah. That's a different thing mm-hmm. entirely. I would agree. Yeah. So, um, you know, the the idea of declaring somebody a terrorist, and actually I just saw this article today uh, that um, was, uh, oh gosh, what's the guy's name? I can't think of his name now. Um, But one of the many um, Iraqi or Afghani or whatever, uh, Middle Eastern, Arab Muslims that was arrested by the U.S. on terror charges um, kept indefinitely, not tried, tortured, et cetera, et cetera, and then released sometimes after more than a decade wow. without charges <laughs> because they never found anything. Because they like never... These were probably, probably a majority of them, yeah. innocent people. Yeah, just in the wrong place, wrong time. And because they were declared a terrorist, yeah. they didn't have any of the protections that the Bill of Rights gives to people that are accused of crimes. Yeah. Um, the Fifth and Sixth Amendment protections that include, you know, cruel and unusual punishment, um, a right to a speedy trial, uh, you know, the right to a trial by jury, yeah. um, all of these things, the right to face your accuser, uh, to to have counsel. Yeah. Like, um, at least the Supreme Court eventually struck that part down. Like now, these people actually get lawyers. Yeah. But there was a long time where they didn't. Well, they, yeah, they didn't have any of these options. Yeah, and so now you give the the same opportunity. Um, to people, uh, you know, to the Mexican cartel members and leaders and so forth yeah. that, um, now of course they go out of their way not to do it in the U S uh, yeah. that's what Guantanamo Bay is for, um, yeah. is to ship these people off, <laughs> hold them indefinitely, torture them for a confession. Oh, that's another part of it, right? Like you can't co- coerce a confession from somebody, um, according to these, uh, bill of rights protections. Yeah. Be damn sure can if they're if you move them apparently off site yeah. and don't apply the constitution to them. Take them to Cuba. Um, but this is a real concern because it, it is indicative of an authoritarian government. Yeah. Um, essentially, what you've you've created two different justice systems. Yeah. Um, one for American citizens, presumably. Yeah. Uh, you know, but there's so some far. examples. Well, 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 there's some examples already of that not being the case. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we don't have a problem with summary execution, apparently, by drone bombing, even if you're a U.S. citizen, if we think that you're involved in terror. Yeah. Um, but... Well, and you, you, what you do is you run the risk of anybody being considered a terrorist. Mm-hmm. And, and you already see, like, glimpses of that, like, with what happened with, um, what's his, with Alex Jones. Like, I mean, is it really that much of a stretch for him to be considered a terrorist for saying, for just saying stuff mm-hmm. and just having a, having an opinion? Um, I mean, it's it, it seems like a stretch now, but ten years from now, it may not be a stretch. Yeah, I mean, one of the people that I was alluding to earlier, Anwar al Awlaki, uh, yeah. with the drone bombing. Yeah. Um, to my knowledge, he never participated. In any battle with the U.S., yeah. like his real crime was that he got online and he was preaching jihad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just words. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it may have incited people to violence, but yeah. Well, and that's like that goes back to my Alex Jones thing. I mm-hmm. mean, is he really responsible for the what actions other... of other people? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and there's an, and a lot of people are making the argument that yes, he is responsible mm-hmm. for that. And obviously, I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. But I just I'm, all I'm saying is is we're we're inching closer and closer to to the, exactly what we don't want to be. Yeah. Well, and, you know, this comes back, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, um, that some people will say, oh, yeah, well, that's, you know, that's how uh, other countries treat terrorists or whatever. Like, well, yeah. are, is that the trying to, kind of government that we're trying to, to yeah. create? Exactly. I don't think so. No. I mean, do we want, do we want China's government? Do we want Syria's government? Yeah. I, I mean, I I would think not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this country was created to be essentially the opposite yeah, of all of that. Exactly. Um, but they, you know, they, it's the creation of this fear in order to um, excuse like really horrible actions. Yeah. 
um, as necessary. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, well, before I move to the next bit, actually, because I, I, I think it's really easy to connect um, removing some of these Fifth and Sixth Amendment protections uh, to the impeachment process that's going on right now. <laughs> yeah. But before we move on, I just want to make sure that people understand a term that gets used a lot yeah. um, when we're talking about terror stuff yeah. uh, or the, uh, the wars in the Middle East specifically and something that could come up if we you know, declare these cartels uh, as terrorists yeah. um, and start launching strikes across the border into Mexico is that they have uh, what they call signature strikes. Yeah, okay. Like you hear this term. With some frequency. Like, yeah. you've heard the term. Before, I've heard the right? term, okay. yeah. Uh, so, do you know what it is? Not exactly. I All mean, right. I, yeah. <laughs> here's not the, really. Here's the interesting part. Like, okay. if you knew what it... Because it sounds like... It sounds like a very precise thing, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that, that's, strikes. That's, 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 what I, that's what I would think. But, I mean, that's kind of what I've always assumed, maybe. Yeah. Well, and I think that the, the term is created for you to assume that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to assume I'm wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, signature strikes are uh, drone bombings, drone assassinations, essentially, that are based on um, behavior uh, okay. or um, membership in some particular group. And when I say membership in some particular group, I don't mean like the ISIS cell outside. Okay, well, we had some tef- technical difficulties there. I think what I said was the ISIS cell outside of Jalalabad, and then there was a whole bunch after that. Like yeah. three, five minutes of talking before we realized that we were not recording. Yeah. Um, so let's try that again. Uh, I, gosh, how much did I say about signature strikes? Because I really think it's important. So um, behavior, right? I was talking about behavior last. I think so. It could. Be, oh, we missed all the lost person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. Oh well. Uh, so um, it could be behavior like. Um, Oh, I, it was member of a group, right? Yeah. That's what. That's the last thing. We're, wow. Yeah. We lost a lot of stuff. Yeah, we lost a lot of stuff. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, sorry, everybody. Um, you missed the best part of the episode. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it could be, uh, you know, the as far as membership in a group, it could be like age. Yeah. Like he's military age. Really? Maybe location. He's military age in a place where there's been militants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, drop a bomb. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, behavior is a big part of it too. Uh, and it can be, you know, behavior like, well, he drove, I- I'm trying to reproduce this as best I can. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um and, you know, a guy drove three miles up the road. Uh, then he did a U-turn and he came back half a mile and then he took a right and he went another couple miles out that way. <laughs> Man, it's a good thing that's not the standard here in this country because I'm telling you right now, I would be drone bombed on the way here tonight. Like, yeah. I, I stay lost, man. I can't find. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all it takes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, so, I, and I had a friend in college that said, um, I have the sense of direction of a yak. <laughs> so I have no qualms about stopping at every little convenience store on my way to some place and asking for directions. I want second opinions on directions. That's what he said. Dude, I'm I'm the same way, man. Like the age of the GPS has been good to me. Yeah. Because I stay lost, man. <laughs> I generally know where I am. Well, um, generally. Well, but and here's the real scary part is that it that could become a standard here. Yeah. In right. the U.S., especially as uh, police forces become more militant, mm-hmm. um, and the fact that they they actually do use cell phone tracking on this stuff yeah. uh, that they're doing overseas. Like, they they may drop a bomb on somebody based on how their cell phone moved without ever putting eyes on them. Wow. That's just insane. And this is how things, like, happen so frequently, like bombs on weddings yeah. and funerals and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Some guy got lost on the way to the wedding, and they were tracking his cell phone. Uh-oh, we got yep. a terrorist story. Look, he, he met with a whole bunch of people. Let's bomb them. Exactly. It's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, like, it, that's, it's funny. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's not funny. funny. But it's sad. Yeah. Like I mean, that's and yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, and then it, in terms of, well, okay. So just remember when you hear signature strike that it's not some very precise thing like it sounds like. Yeah. Um. It's messy. 
they that they may actually be dropping bombs on people that they have never set eyes that on. They have no clue what's really going on. Yeah. It's not like they've got a whole bunch of intel. They're just they're just looking at at, mm-hmm. at patterns of behavior. Patterns of behavior. Yeah. Um, but yeah, things like uh, the you know drive up, drive back, <laughs> drive around thing yeah. that that doesn't just happen when you're trying to lose a tail or make sure that nobody's following you. That also happens when you're lost. Yeah, like like me on the way here tonight. Yeah, I'm just saying. If you still get lost on the way here. That's pretty sad. You you went to school like. A block. Walking distance away from me. It's true. It's amazing how quick you forget things. Though. Yeah, I guess I can try and block out school, right? right. Um, so, and then the the loss of these Fifth and Sixth Amendment protections, this is something that has been happening uh, as part of the process in the impeachment yeah. uh, inquiry um, to this point. Um, and this is, of course, something Which, that we can't not talk about because they announced that they're actually going to follow through on this today. But it's it's funny. So um, so I was telling you before the podcast that – so I listened to about an hour of this yesterday where they mm-hmm. had the um, professors and the law attorneys and all of them yeah. were like there, I guess, being questioned by yeah. – Constitutional law. Con- <laughs> constitutional lawyers. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they were all there. And I watched about an hour of this thing, which was brutal. But – it's it's just there's there's nothing there and they they want it to be so bad mm-hmm. but there when when you listen to the republicans there's there's plenty to dispute when it comes to this like they don't really have anything mm-hmm. yeah. um, but their but their whole reason and so like a big thing was that the Democrats saying, well, well, Donald Trump could come up here, he could be here today, and he could he could dispel all of this right now. Mm-hmm. And the Republicans are like, no, he couldn't, because y'all wouldn't allow him to have the people here to defend him, to to even make this a, a true trial. Yeah. So well, they're trying to avoid a true trial. Well, and that's what they can't trying. avoid it in the Senate, though. No, so if they, they do can't. vote on us. Then it goes to the Senate. It's going to be a real trial. It'll be a real trial, and that's and and that's honestly like that's what Trump needs and wants mm-hmm. because he's not going to get that in the House. Yeah, I mean, well, he's and it just could not. be real damaging to the Democrats if that. I yeah. mean, they're going to try and rush it through and like just kind of push it along. Yeah. Um. But if well, and if, it's, it's if pro- I were a Republican in the Senate. I would want to drag this out as long as I could and well, pull out every single one of those things. I would be subpoenaing, um, what's his name, Biden, Hunter Biden, and yep. like all these people. I would be absolutely like, is, bringing all these people. It in. is funny because they've they've drug it out in the House, and then you're right, they're going to try to rush it through in the Senate, and it's it's just insane. Yeah, I mean, there's but when you listen to the Democrats, I mean, well, they haven't really drug it out in the House. Really? I mean, no, so this I mean, is, it's, this has gone pretty quickly. Has it? Okay. Yeah. Um, and these, you know, I, I, so I listened to the opening statements from the constitutional lawyers. Yeah. And, um, and then I watched some highlights after that because that's like, really was, the best way to do it is to just really catch the highlights because there's so much nothing. Yeah. I mean, well, it really is. Nobody really said anything. So this guy, no. um, Jonathan Turley, I think is his name, the uh, attorney that was called in by the Republicans to speak. Yeah. Um, so the Democrats had four guys, the Republicans had one. One, yeah. Um, and uh, so, and he's actually a Democrat, <laughs> really? uh, as I understand it. And he made yeah. it very clear in his opening statement that he voted against Trump, that he is not a Trump supporter. But yeah. he, he said something, he, like most of his opening statement was also just completely devoid of any information. Yeah. Um, but he did make a one point that I think was really important. And that's he said that you know this is um, they're they're searching for a crime to to match the the anger yeah. essentially um, that they're just using this as a way to get rid of a president that they don't like yeah um, which I, I think is really clear but um, yeah. that I thought that that was a really good point to make and I haven't I haven't double checked this so I don't know this for sure but I have I have heard that two of the Democrats. Um, representatives, attorneys yeah. there um, were calling for Trump's impeachment like right after he was inaugurated. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. There were people, um, I say people, there were representatives that were from inauguration on were, mm-hmm. were pushing for impeachment. Yeah. Well, I mean, a couple of these attorneys. Oh, the attorneys. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, my yeah. bad. I misunderstood. Now, and yeah. this is another thing. Like, this is just a show uh, yeah. to begin with. They don't need these people's permission to oh, no. launch an impeachment inquiry. This is just yeah. for you. Well, this is uh, this is for all the people in the audience that don't know if this is real or not. And so yeah. they're trying to provide an excuse because, like, three quarters of the people in the House of Representatives are lawyers. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not like they don't know this stuff. Yeah, Yeah. most of those representatives are already attorneys. They don't need some attorney's opinion on this. Um, It's completely unnecessary. It's only for you. Uh, And here, by the way, is my um, expectation uh, based on my interactions, uh, reading, listening to, etc. with constitutional uh, lawyers. Yeah. What they really do is that they use what the Constitution doesn't say yeah. To in order to ignore the things that the Constitution does, does say. say. Yeah, that's what a, that's what the role of a constitutional lawyer seems hmm. to me to be. Yeah, um, is to to try and find the loopholes around the restrictions in the Constitution. That's um, that's tying the, them down. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that I've heard uh, come up a lot, um, and, and of course you know back to this uh, being able to face your accuser thing. Like that's the real um, question there. This these Fifth and Sixth Amendment protections are to protect somebody that is facing the law yeah. in the United States, even yeah. if it's an impeachment. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't have to be a trial like yeah. the, like a normal court trial in a in a federal courthouse or something like that. Yeah. Um, the president in an impeachment trial should have the same protections that any other American uh, would have. I mean, and, I would think so. I and mean, like I said before, when we were talking about the terrorist thing, yeah. that those protections should be afforded to anybody that's being tried in the U.S. Yeah. Because Even it's not about they're, whether they're a citizen or not. Yeah. It's a thing that we believe to be human rights. Yeah. Yeah. These are they're, these are protections for everybody, not mm-hmm. just for citizens and whatnot. Like, yeah. That's you still get these things. Yeah. And certainly the president qualifies. I, I would I would imagine. <laughs> but you know, here we have this thing where um, he has been denied the right to face the original accuser the the quote unquote whistleblower, the whistleblower. Uh, Eric Cheramella yeah assuming that it's him assuming yeah um and you know the, then they started this whole thing where you can't out the whistleblower <laughs> yeah. like uh, whistleblower protections say that you can't out the whistleblower well that's just yeah. that's just claptrap it's yeah. I, I'm, I was trying to think of a word that wasn't <laughs> a curse word yeah. um you know the the idea the Whistleblower protections are to protect the whistleblower from any kind of um, response, uh, revenge type things. Yeah. Um, it, it's not to protect the whistleblower's identity. Yeah. It's to protect him for any kind of retaliation in the workplace. Yeah. All right. Like, um, now, I suppose that you can do that by protecting the person's identity, but that's not the purpose of whistleblower protections. It's not yeah. to protect their identity. It's to protect them from retaliation. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, again, these Bill of Rights protections say that the that anybody should be able to face the person that's accusing him since it started there. Yeah, exactly. Then I Trump should that's... be able to face this person. Yeah. This person should have to come to trial. Yeah, it should have to testify. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other thing that they've been talking about is, well, you keep hearing this, well, if they did the vote in secret, then the results would be different. Um, <laughs> that if they didn't have to, uh, you know, publicly vote, yeah. that, you know, a bunch of Republicans would switch sides and vote against the president and so on and so forth. All right. Yeah. Now, just stop and think about this for a moment. Yeah. The the secret vote from your representative. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You nailed it on the head. How am I supposed to know whether the person that I chose to be my representative is representing me if I don't know how he's voting? Exactly. That's the reason these things are public record anyway. Yeah. All of these votes that are taken in Congress, because mm-hmm. that's we're, that's how we're supposed to hold these people accountable. Yeah. At the ballot box. <laughs> exactly. Now, of course, my opinion on the ballot box is every time that you get the opportunity to vote, yeah. you vote for not the incumbent. Yeah. <laughs> My theory on this is every time you get the opportunity, fire them all. Yeah, oh, I agree with that. <laughs> um, it, it is very rare that you get somebody that you want to stay in place. Yeah. If you're paying attention. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's the that's the rub, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that most people don't they vote for him because he's got nice hair? <laughs> right. <laughs> Still kills me. Yeah. Good old Chude. Um, well, I mean, that's all I got. Yeah. Strong ending, except for the technical difficulties. Yeah, I hope this all meshes back together correctly. I hate <laughs> yeah. that we lost that whole section. <laughs> yeah, you missed the funniest joke in the episode. It's really a shame. Yeah. Well, oh, well. What you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, Callie, you wanna say anything before we close things out? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. 
She said, no, she's good, For in case the mic didn't pick that up. It would have been hard for the mic to pick that up. <laughs> well, that's, that's what she said. <laughs> um, oh, uh, by the way, I'm just going to throw out there, if anybody listening has some particular uh, musical or production talents and you would like to submit, you know, not a theme exactly, but like some intro and outro music. Yeah, we definitely need That'd something. That would be sweet. Yeah. Um, I got an idea in mind for some outro music. I had an idea in mind for some intro music that I was going to try and work out. Um, but then my phone died and I had it as a voice memo. And so it's, so it's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> it's gone. I can't remember. It was like this little jazzy kind of number. Anyway. Oh, well. I have um, to do some looking. So are we looking for something like that's like... That's well, okay. So I, I'm not going to put any restrictions on this. Okay. Um, I just have to like it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious. We, we have to agree that it's, it's that it's good. good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to try and point people in any direction. If you want to do this, right. um, it, it would be awesome. I do have my email address working again. Ah. I I can't seem to send. <laughs> but you're receiving. <laughs> but I'm receiving. So um, I, I'll have to get on the phone with somebody and say, "Hey, why does all this information you gave me on how to set up my email not work for sending?" Yeah. Because. <laughs> uh, Seems like it should work, right? <laughs> but it doesn't. So, so if anybody sends Mike anything, don't be alarmed if he doesn't respond immediately. <laughs> yeah, actually, I can respond from my locally installed Outlook. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't <laughs> respond from uh, Office three sixty five online, the Outlook uh, version there, and I can't respond from my phone. Weird. Yeah, um, it, it seems like it should be the same information, but apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> so I'll have to get somebody on the phone to help help me figure out help me troubleshoot yeah. um there's some things that i thought about trying but their mail server setup is a little different on this new host it's yeah. not something that i've encountered quite like this before so i don't know if like the things that i used to do to do these things through exchange and so forth would work i don't know i had to call somebody i got you but here's the other uh, upside of the new host is yep. that on my old host um i would call support from time to time and the wait time would be like 20 to 30 minutes. And then the person that ended up answering the phone was often not really that helpful. Yeah. Now, I've called support one time with the new host. Yeah. They answered immediately, and the person was really helpful. So nice. <laughs> this is already an improvement. <laughs> so, so nice. Yeah. Very good. Um, I did not call them to get help uh, transferring the website over, though, by the way. I really? figured that you out all it. on my own. Well, good job. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, next time I have to do it, I will have forgotten. <laughs> but you've done it Three before. years from now, when I have to do this again, <laughs> yeah. I will have forgotten. Um, okay, so, yeah, if you have something, uh, please, you know, send me a little MP3 file or MP3 files if you have intro and outro ideas. Okay. And uh, I, I would love to hear it. We need to... You know, we need to just like, you know, jazz it up a little. I like music. <laughs> jazz it up a little. Jazz it up a little. Okay. Anyway, um, in the meantime, uh, all the normal stuff, uh, follow us on Facebook, Podbean, subscribe on iTunes, um, like and comment, share, 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 share. Uh, on iTunes um, and Podbean both, uh, ratings are nice. Yeah. Like if you want to, you Absolutely. know, give us some, give us some stars. That's that's kind of sweet. Um, I guess that's more or less all I got. You got anything that you want to add to any of that? That's all I got, man. Okay. Well, uh, we expect to be back here in a week um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.